study here in the book. Let's look at Exodus chapter 32. 32. Go there with me. You read it, then I repeat, repeat it what you read. Someone read Exodus chapter 32, verse 32. <clears throat> Somebody like to read it? Yes, ma'am. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sins, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. All right. So I'd like to just welcome our listening audience by streamline, <clears throat> screaming. And so, verse 32, she read, it says, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive, the, will not forgive, if thou wilt forgive their sins, and if not, blot me out. I pray thee, blot, but of the, now blot me out. I pray thee, but of the book which, where, thou, thou has written. written the book. Now let's got another text here. All right, let's go to Revelation three five. The book that's written. All those who are written in the book shall be delivered. Keep that in mind. Wow. Revelation three five. And for the sake of the audience, I read as we get to Revelation. Chapter 3, verse 5. We have this hope. God said he would deliver every one of his people whose name is written in the book. Now, we got to understand that. In verse 5, Revelation chapter 3, the Bible says here, He that overcometh, he that what? Overcome. It said, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed with raiment. White, white, I'm sorry. Thank you, sir. With white raiment. With white raiment. But, and I will not blot his name out of the book of what? Life. But I will what? Confess his name before my father and before his angel. So the book is the what? The book, of book of life. Keep that in mind. But they said those who overcome will be clothed in white raiment. What does a white raiment represent? Righteousness. Righteousness. All right, man. So you just don't get your name in the book and stay there. All right. All right, let's go to chapter 21, verse 27, Revelation. So we understand the book that's spoken of in Daniel is the book of life. Revelation 21 and verse 27. Verse 27, the Bible says, And these shall know what? Why? Into an end, what? Anything that they follow. Neither whatsoever work it abomination or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. All right? Come on, let's see something else. Come on. Go to Philippians chapter 4. Let's read Philippians chapter 4, verse 3. In the book, the book of life, the Lamb book. Philippians chapter 4, verse 3. Notice what the Bible says. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labor with me. And then it says, in the gospel, with Clements also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose name are in the book of life. All right? One more here. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, 19 and 20. So I think it was very clear that in Daniel chapter 12, 1, it's talking about the book of life. Luke chapter 10. Just jot it down here. I don't know about you. I want my book to be kept in the book of life because I have his promise. I shall be delivered. <clears throat> Luke 10, 19 and 20. Listen to what the word of God says. Luke 10, 19 and 20. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on <clears throat> serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And what? Nothing shall by any means what? Notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. We can do all that work, but if our name is not written, now how do we get our name in the book of life? How do we get our name? 
Jesus standing at the door, knocking on the door of my heart, receiving him into my life, accepting the invitation. Then we have to maintain that walk. So Daniel 12, 1 talks about that book. Insights on country living. We'll see this in a moment as we go through this. So we can understand the principle behind this. Preparation for the final crisis. There will be a time of trouble. Now, we are not in the time of trouble. According to Matthew 24, 8, it says we are in the beginning. The days of sorrow. This day. In Matthew 24, you have two aspects. In Matthew 24, it talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. It talks about the second coming of Christ. That destruction of Jerusalem already happened. We are now in the season of the second coming of Christ. You understand? Matthew 24 is very clear. This pandemic is just the beginning of sorrows. Now, one thing came to our mind. Some of us was talking and I was on the Zoom with some folks in, the, in, in England. And I shared with them, I said, you know, people really are dealing with mental health in this crisis. And as you know, there's a lot of folks who are really feeling the pressure. And just being quarantined in the house. I mean, when you open up the gate and let those folks out, they come like horses. I mean, they come. And so... The coronavirus, as you and I already know, is really not the issue. There's a pandemic that started in the Garden of Eden. Do you hear what I just said? Amen. And that pandemic is sin. Mm -hmm. That has affected every aspect of human existence. And this is why when we see in this crisis, man is trying to figure out there's a lot of conflicting ideas, contention, destruction, because people are groping in the dark. We realize that God has raised up a body of people to be the light to this world. And as I've listened to Scott's testimony, she goes in there, we're gonna get some walking papers, she goes in there being a witness even seeking to comfort the one who had to be under the mandate. Here's the one which I don't call being fired. She was not fired. It was God providential leadings. But can you imagine you've been in a position that you've been called in and therefore your you know, you, you, you your work is dependent upon you going there with a little bit of trembling and you're not gonna give no comforting words to the folks who put execution on you. Well, you're not gonna say it, don't worry about it. You're going to say, may God bring his wrath on you. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Hello, I've been down that road when it, before, B.C., before Christ. Then you got some folks who go back with, with shotguns and blow up the place. Come on, talk to me. We, 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 this is a pandemic. So that in itself was downloaded by the spirit of the living God to be a light in that situation. So let's go back to Genesis and so here in Genesis chapter 2, 7, 8, and the Lord planted, planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. This is God's original plan. And then it goes on in verse 15. It says, and the Lord God took man and put him into the garden to dress it and keep it. Man's responsibility and role. Send the foundation. At Adventist home, page 25, paragraph 1. God prepared man's first home. You agree with that? No, you got to. It says the word of God. It says the Eden home of our first parents was prepared for them by God himself. When he had furnished it with everything that man could desire, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God didn't put man here on earth, then prepare a home. He prepared a home, then put him in there. Oh, nobody. I hope folks who listen to me on Streamline, especially young folks, think about getting married. You better have a home to bring that woman. Right, cop? All right. He prepared a home. Then he put man there. You don't get married and then try to find a home. Mm. Amen. <laughs> Streamers, I hope you're saying amen to that. 
The home of our first parents was to be a pattern for other homes as their children should go forth to occupy the earth. That home, beautified by the hand of God himself, was not a gorgeous palace. Men, in their pride, delight in magnificent and costly edifices and glory in the works of their own hand. But God placed Adam in the garden. Conduce it now. I have, we're getting a lot of calls. People said, I got to get out of the country. I need this, 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 this. I said, okay. Have you talked to God about that? He might not give you that mansion on this earth. He has a place for you. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. Now, this is important that we know what God's will is and ask him to show us exactly. This was his dwelling. The blue heaven was his dome. The earth with its delicate flowers and carpet of living green was his floor. And the leafy branch of the goodly trees were a canopy. Its wall were hung with the mag most magnificent adornings, the handiwork of the great master artist. That was your father, my father, home. Answering God's purpose. In the surrounding of the holy pair was a lesson for all time. That, now notice this, it says that true happiness is found not in the indulgence of pride and luxury, but in communion with God through his created works. If men would give less attention to the artificial and would cultivate greater simplicity, they will come far near to answering the purpose of God in their creation. Pride and ambition are never satisfied. Did you get that? Pride and ambition is never satisfied. But those who are truly wise will find substantial and elevating pleasure in the sources of enjoyment that God has placed within their reach of all. Very important. In the surrounding of the holy pair was a lesson for all. We found that, okay? Then it goes on. Heaven is home, 139. I am instructed by the Lord to warn our people not to flock to the cities, to find homes for their families, to fathers and to mothers. I am instructed to say, fail not to keep your children within your own premises. Time now. Take your families away from the cities is my message. Now, let me ask you, those of us listening, those of us here, God used this individual to pen these words. When you think these was penned? Over 150 years. Are you listening to me? And the cities are not like they are now. Now, that's when they was in, with, with, with horse and buggy, my man. Riding back. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. No major city. And 100 years ago, this been written. I'm saying this for a reason. Mm -hmm. That God will have to allow certain conditions to occur to move his people. Because the world can't move unless they see a demonstration of this. Mm -hmm. This is a 100 years old message. 100 years ago, cities went out like this. It goes on. Country Living, page 13, paragraph 1. There is not one family in a hundred who will, be improve, who will be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. I'm a, let, let. There is not one family in a hundred who will be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. Zero. Zero. Did you get that? Now, maybe some of y'all read, I read this, but now it just so clear to me. I'm going, here we got health center now, fact is people coming, they got to go back to the cities. If we believe this, it says there's not one, not one. John, that's zero. Nobody can improve their health, physical, mental, and spirit, living in the cities. And we can sit here for another hour giving you the very reason why they cannot do that. It goes on. Faith, hope, love, happiness can far better be gained in retired places 
where there are fields, hills, and trees. Take your children away from the sights and sounds of the city, away from the rattle and din of streetcars. Now, you know there's written streetcars and the deal. You know, now we don't have that. We have 100 miles of vroom, vroom, you know, jet planes. It says, goes on here. It says, and teams and their minds will become more healthy. It will be found easy to bring home to their hearts the truth of the word of God. It will be what? Found easier. Easier. The time has come. <laughs> when, as God opens the way, family should move out of the city. Now, here's the thing for those listening to us. We don't have to pray that God show me I need to move out of this city. That's a waste of God's energy. You don't need to be praying that prayer. Anybody listen to me. You say, Lord, I see it. Now, open the way. You get what I'm saying? Open. That's what it said. Open the way. The children should be taken into the country. The parents should get a suitable place as their means will allow. Though the dwelling may be what? Small. Yet there should be land in connection with it that it may be cultivated. You don't need a 10-bedroom house as long as there's some land connected with it. Before the overflowing scourge, we'll come to see this, shall come upon the dwellers of the earth. The Lord calls upon all who are Israelite indeed. We're dealing with spiritual Israel indeed. To he to indeed to prepare for that what? All right now. Before the overflowing scourge shall come upon the dwellers of the earth. The Lord calls upon all who are Israelite indeed to prepare for that event. Prepare for what event? The overflowing scourge. We'll see this as we get to the close of this. To parents. He sends the warning cry, gather your children to your own houses, gather them away from those who are disregarding the commandments of God, who are teaching and practicing evil. Get out of the large city as fast as possible, written 100 years ago, fast as possible. Hmm. Withdrawal to the freedom of rural areas. The time is fast coming when the controlling power of labor unions you know, labor union, whether automobile, whether technology, labor union, unions, consolidate, AMA. AMA, all these are unions, will be very oppressive. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provision. Keep that in mind. For in the future, the problem of what? Buying and selling will be a very serious one. Now, I thank God for the quiz in Matthew 24, 8, because even here in the ministry, we can survive, but the, we survive. But the point is, it says, your own provisions. Well, you don't have to go to Walmart, Kroger's. We'll see this in a moment. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now, we should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities to rural districts where the houses are not crowded closer together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. Hmm. Lesson from Enoch. As God's commandment keeping people, we must leave the cities, as did Enoch. We must work in the cities, but not dwell in them. Very clear. Some people say, if everybody leave the city, who's going to rescue the city? It's very clear right there. Come on now. When in, it says, when iniquity abounds in a nation, in a nation, there's always to be heard some voice giving warning and instruction as the voice of Lot was heard in Sodom, yet Lot could have preserved his family from many evils had he had not made his home in this wicked, polluted city. All that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them even if they had lived in a place 
some distance away from the city. Do you get that? He did not have to live in the city of Sodom to rescue the folks in Sodom. Enoch walked with God, and yet he did not live in the midst of any city, polluted with every kind of violence and wickedness, as did Lot in Sodom. Let these really echo through our mind. God will help his people. That's a promise. Parents can secure small homes in the country with land for cultivation where they can have orchards and where they can raise vegetables and small fruits to take the place of flesh meat, which is so corrupting to the lifeblood coursing through the veins. On such places, the children will not be surrounded with the corrupting influence of the city. God, I like this. Let's read that together. What does it say? God will help his people to find such home outside of the city. Did you get that? That's a promise. God, you said get out. You said you will help me find a place. That's what he said. This is when we first started our little garden, etc. Outside of the city. Outside. We got to get back growing everything we need in this place. Go with me to the book of Genesis chapter 47. Let's go there. Amen. Money fell it, famine in the land. Genesis chapter 47. So I believe we're clear on the fact that God wants us out of those wicked cities. Not tomorrow, today when we hear his voice. Genesis chapter 47, we pick up at verse 13. Let's get some uh, understanding what's taking place. Time of the children of Israel, Joseph had already been placed in captivity by his brothers. But God was working in behalf of that because Joseph was to be a tool in God's hand to be a savior to his family. But they thought... They were doing some injustice here. So let's see what's happening in verse 13 here. It says here, And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore. As I read, just ask God to give you clarity what's been heard. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. You listening? Gather all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's house. Now this here is implication. What we're going to see as we come to the close is the days we're living in. Keep this in mind now. Because when we look at the very indication of the coming season, all the money in Pharaoh's house. Now, who is Pharaoh? He's a king. So you got the state there. and You got the government there. So all the money was in the hands of the government. Are you with me, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Verse 15. And when money fell in the land of Egypt, in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in thy presence for the money filled? Now, Pharaoh had all the money. Joseph, wise man, provided. Right. Now, it seems that Joseph is working for Pharaoh. What y'all think about that? Hmm. Now, who placed Joseph in that place? God did. All right, let's see the story. Now, all the money is there. Even the Egyptians, who are the indigenous people of Egypt, realize now their dependence upon the government. Did you hear what I just said? Their dependence upon the government. Okay. Now, verse 16, and Joseph said, give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if money Fail. You got to see this. You got to see this now. It says here, 
Joseph said, give your cattle. Now, cattle, in that time, what, what is a cattle? What's a cattle? It's business. That's their livelihood. They crop. The cattle was an important animal. Workhorse, Jonathan. He said, give the government your cattle. Turn it over to me. Are you listening? Turn it over. We, 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 we see the broad picture, but it's already happening. If I had another hour, I can show you how this thing has been happening all along and it's still happening. But that's all right because God is waking us up with this little crisis here. Notice what it says here. Give your cattle. Why, Joseph? Verse 17. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph and gave them bread. And, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange. That's what you call bartering. Bartering for horses and for flocks and for cattle and the herds and the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle one year. Now, they turned all their resources that would sustain them to the government. Now they're dependent upon the government. That's just one year, though. All right, let's move on. Follow me now. It goes on and says here. It says in verse 18, when that year, brothers and sisters, was ended, they came unto him the second year hmm, and said unto him, we will not hide it from my Lord, how that our money is spent. My Lord also has our herds of cattle. There is no aught left in the sight of my Lord, but our what? In our land. <laughs> There's a movement going on. In this world, especially in this country, in this world, this, you will see, is happening before our eyes, and we're not clear on it. Because there's a reason for that. Verse 19, I'm almost there. It says, wherefore shall we die before thy eyes? Now remember now, the cattle, everything that's taken from them, that's bread, and these folks are desperate for survival. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a behavior process taking place here. There's not one of us that would not do anything to survive. Come on, talk to me. It's like you went on that job. The job, you depended upon the job. Not to marginalize it, but you know in your heart that God has something better for you to do. And though it might, help, might have impact your finances, but you did not go in there with fear, with your stomach in knots and sweat dripping on your armpits. I'm just saying that what is taking place is creating a response because the devil never comes un, I mean, undisguised. He comes as a benefactor. You got to get this in mind. You got to read through the eyes of God, not to be fanatical, not to be extreme, but read through the eyes of God that you know what season we're in, that we know what to be doing to prepare for the next season. While everybody will going fanatical with their words, we need to be in a mode of preparation. Let me move on. It says here, verse 19, wherefore shall we die before thy eyes? But we in our land, buy us in our land for bread. And we in our land will be servants unto Pharaoh. Listen to this. Give us seed. You ain't getting this. Give us seed that we may live and not die, that the land be not desolate. What do you think meant by give us seed? They're dependent. But, now, but how, how, now you and I say, well, I haven't given Pharaoh my seeds. Yes, you have. Now, when you think about, my brother, seed, what's the purpose of seed? To, to reproduce. Now, what kind of seeds don't reproduce? GMO and everything that is now being produced, you cannot reproduce those seeds. You ain't listening to me. You already gave them up. If we're not, okay, that's whole. I'm going ahead of myself. Did you get, you get that, man? 
Now, I'm not saying it is for us to sit here and say, mm, mm, that's your problem. Uh -uh. We, it's our problem. Our problem. We already gave it up years ago. Like you mentioned, the names of folks already given up. It's hard to find watermelon with seeds in it. Oranges don't have seeds. Paper don't see. You got to think with me now. Meat ministry got to think. Family got to think. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. we, whew, we, we, we are not there. Amen. Listen to what it says. Verse 20. And Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh. That's why I, when eventually we're going to bend all this and move close to the mountain. But when land come available, come available, you grab it. You pray. Everything around, grab it. Refugees are coming. Get land. That's, if you're going to invest anything, invest in the land. Money. Dissolve your 401k. Get some land. I'm telling you. Verse 21. And as for the people, listen, folk, he removed them to cities from one end of the borders of Egypt, even to the other end thereof. Only, listen to this now, only the land of the priest bought he not. The government was exempt. It's still the same. No, uh -uh, it ain't talking about Israel. Talking about Pharaoh priests. They represent the government. They get privileges, my brother. Well, huh? <laughs> it says, <laughs> have mercy. It says, only the land of the priest bought he not. For the priest had a portion assigned them of the government, you got to get this. It's been centralized. The government is your benefactors. That's why people say, well, I'm going to start a ministry. And therefore, I can get some government support. If that support is not like the time of Nehemiah with no strings attached, then then you can get it. Amen. But you do not want anything that's going to interfere with the work. Listen to what it says here. It says, and did eat their portion, which Pharaoh gave them. Wherefore, they sold not their land. Then Joseph said unto the people, Behold, I have bought you this day in your land for Pharaoh. Lo, here is seed for you, and you shall sow the land. <laughs> and it shall come to pass in the increase that you shall give what? The fifth part unto Pharaoh. And four parts shall be your own for seed of the field and for your food and for them of your household and for food for all your little ones. I can go on and on because I got to finish up. I want you to get this picture. That God had told the children of Israel in the beginning that you, my people should be reckoned alone. We're so far behind of a hundred some years it's going to require now collective individuals and families putting this together because we should have all, uh, all of that which was required, education, everything we had, we should, it should have been in place. Yeah. It's not in place. It's going to be a struggle. This is why one person, one family can't do it. It's going to have to be two, two families doing this. We can go on and on. We see it. Before our eyes. That's right. It says, with a piece of land and a comfortable home, whenever possible, it is the duty of parents to make homes in the country for their children. Fathers and mothers who possess a piece of land, listen to this, fathers and mothers who possess a piece of land and a comfortable home are kings and queens. You think the wealthy is the kings and queens. They don't understand what we understand. It says, do not Consider it a privation when you are called to leave the cities and move out into the country places. Here, there await rich blessing for those who will grasp them. 
It is not a place for escape. It's a place for translation. <laughs> God's plan for Israel through disobedience to God. Adam and Eve had lost Eden because of sin. The whole earth was cursed. That's the pandemic. But if God knows, but if God's people follow his instruction, their land will be restored to fertility and beauty. That's, that's what we need to be praying and moving toward. God himself gave them direction in regard to the culture of the soil, and they were to cooperate with him in his restoration. The earth, the earth is waxing old like a garment, clay, mud, whatever. But God said he would restore it if we cooperate with him. Thus, the whole land under God's control will become an object lesson of spiritual truth. As in obedience to his natural laws, the earth should produce its treasures. So in obedience to his moral law, the hearts of the people were to reflect the attributes of his character, both natural and both moral. What season are we in? As I said, Proverbs chapter 6, the Bible tells us, go to the what? We saw this. Go to the ant, you slugger. So then you look at Proverbs 6, 6, 8. The ant prepares for the next season in the season that is in. Right? That's the principle. The ant look for indication. We have a strong indication with this COVID-19. We've seen it. People was fighting over toilet tissue. Paper towels etc. Still fighting. That's an indication to me, ministry, to families, that the next season could not, should not come upon us if we are not in the pathway. There got to be some priorities. Reestablish. This is what I see got to take place in our lives, especially here. Number one, sustainable gardening. When I say sustainable gardening, what is meant by sustainable gardening? What is meant by that? Anybody know? Yeah. It means not only providing for you and your family, but it also means that you can make a living mm -hmm. of this garden. Sustainable. That's right. And when the time comes, you don't have to go to the food market to get food. Why? Because we got to preserve food. Canning. Drying because you ain't, ain't no sense of freezing it. Good. Canning and drying. Hmm? Preserved food prison. This has to be the priority now. Non electrical water supply. Non electrical heating. Preparation time. And what here is interesting to show you that. God is merciful to people like me. This little handout I have, I will give you. It's been around here at this ministry for 20 years. A little handout, over 20 years old. 20 years old. And you will see, because people talk about getting property, it gives everything we need to know what to look for in preparing, seeking for land, what should take place, let me just read a few points here. It said, physical preparation plan for the Sunday law crisis. Proverbs 22, 3. First of all, liquidate debt. Amen. Liquidate debt. Amen. Then we want quality hand tools. I get a list of tools that you need. I get a whole list. I won't call them. Cooking equipment and supplies. Good heavy plated steel wood stove with cooking surface, fire thick lining, large enough to heat the home. One or two complete tests of interior chimney pipes, set of cast iron cooking utensil, canning jars. Per 100 jar, got this, all, everything right here. Here we are, 20 years later. Quality pressure counter, extra ceiling rings, hand powered mill for grinding flour and mill, heating, wood shed, tops, candles, lamps, waterproof matches, strikes. Wood, three years supply of wood per family. Amen. Three years supply per family. Water supply, well or spring water. 
Solar pump, metal, two gallon buckets, gallon buckets, rope, buckets. Food preparation, wood heated greenhouse, preserving food, canning, drying, root cellar, wood heating, sun heated dehydrator. Clothing, even talk about what kind of clothing you should have. Seasonal underwear, un uh, insulated if necessary, work clothes, plenty of socks, durable, practical shoes, gloves, stocks, caps, extra, so on and forth. First aid, talk about first aid. The perfect 10 3 minus. Talk about water, timber, air, location, climate. Talks about then what to check out, any government interference, et cetera, et cetera. Real estate question to consider when you're buying property, zoning, company, all that. Then we got now when we put this together years ago, I have a picture of a hand pump. We used to pump, but now they got more sophisticated ways. This is over 20 years ago. All this is right here. And I look at ourselves, I said, hmm, we got caught this season. Huh? Oh, I got a lot of copies for you. <laughs> Preparation. Let's see, can we close this out? Go to Revelation chapter 13. Not just talking about, let's see what we need to be done, this handout. So let's look at some things of this time of trouble here, what God is telling us. Revelation chapter 13. We're going to pick up here at verse 8. Revelation 13. You there with me? All right. For the sake of time, I'm going to read it in your hearing. Revelation 13, verse 8. The Bible says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not what? Written in the book of life. You get that? Daniel 12, 1. Those whose names are written by accepting Christ as your personal savior. By allowing him to rule in your life. All those whose names are not written. It goes on and says further. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that lead into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill it with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Verse 11. And I beheld another beast. This is dealing with those three angels' message. But I beheld another beast coming out, out of the earth. And that's the old story in itself. The first beast came out of water around many folks. One beast come out of the earth, whereas that's not many folks. Then it says here, behold, another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, those who want further study, this beast that's coming out of the earth is a lamb-like beast. It is nothing but Protestant America. Because the beast that come out of water is the papal system. So here is the two beasts. Now, this beast, I want you to follow me. This beast. This lamb-like beast, two horns, separation of church and state, and republicanism meaning freedom of religion. This is the very connotation, denotation of our country in this part of the world, America. All right, let's move on. Then it goes on and says here, and listen to what it says, and he, who is he referring to? The lamb-like beast which is Protestant America. He, listen, and he exercised all the power of the first beast. Hmm? Paper power. Exercised the power of the first beast. Now listen with this. And he, this lamb-like beast of Protestant America, and he does what? Now, well, I go back. I'm going to go back to verse 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast. Now, do you understand all the power of the first beast? That's the whole study in itself. He exercised all the power of the first beast. Keep that in mind now. All the power of the first beast before him. And causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. So the focus in that this second beast is the instrument. 
that the adversary of God is going to use to bring about his results. So even though we can trace all the, the travelings of the first beast, but we are in the belly. Maybe not my friends from other countries, but this beast, we're in the belly, and this beast has tentacles. Do you know what tentacles are? New Zealand, Netherlands, the islands, all over. I've had folks tell me, some of my brothers in the faith, I'm leaving America. I'm going to escape. They don't understand this word. I don't care where you go. You ain't escaping nothing. The only way you're going to escape, your name got to be written in the Lamb Book of Life. So I'm, I'm just, those who are listening, find you a place on this globe that going to be a refuge for you. Keep you from the wrath of this beast. You're not going to find it. You got to occupy, do the work where you are, and be sure you maintain your name in the Lamb Book of Life. Because I've had, on my 43 years in this work, people talk about finding a place in South Americans and other countries. And now, in some of those countries, it's been shut down already. Ooh, where are we? We sleep. Let's move on here. Verse 13. And he do it great wonders. Who is he referring to now? The lamb-like beast. He do it great wonders so that he can make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man. You're going to see wonders being performed. Miracles in this part of the world. And those who move from here carrying their hellish miracles. Verse 14. And deceive them that dwell on the earth. Now follow me now. <laughs> earth dwellers will be deceived. Earth dwellers will be deceived. Huh? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Except those whose names are written in book. Why? Because we dwelling in higher places in Christ Jesus. All right, you got that. And we're not dwelling just to be praying. We're going to be acting what we just said. We're going to be moving. We're going to be making preparation because we've been led. Follow what it says now. And he does great wonders, and so they make fire come down from earth inside of men. He deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of that first beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. What is meant by image? Hmm? A likeness, right? So we go to Daniel 2, you don't have to go there, but that statue on the plains of Dora was an image that was set up to represent the very nature of that government. And it was designed for them to worship. And so we got to get a clear understanding of what this image is before we close out. Let's look at this then. Here we find, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image, now listen to this now, folks. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should what? Speak and cause. Those two words, that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Speak and cause. I'll come back to that because time runs. I'm going to keep that in mind. Speak and cause. This is what it says. Verse 16. And he, this lamb like bee, causes all. This is what I share in school. We have people coming over here to Tennessee to the school, especially when they're coming out from California and New York. They get they kind of frightened because they know the South was definitely known for its slavery. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. I mean, oppressive. Follow, we're going to read it. There's not going to be black oppressing black, I mean, white oppressing blacks, etc. This is a slavery. Watch this. Follow me now. It says here, I'm going to go back to verse 16, and he causes how many? 
That's include red, white, brown, pink, green. All, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Right hand represents the work for your thinking process. All right? It goes on here. To receive that mark in the right hand or the forehead. Because remember, God want to put something in the forehead. What do he want to put in the forehead? The seal of God. All right. Follow me. Verse 17. And that no man might what? Buy or sell, save he, except he that had the what? The mark or the name or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that understand it count the number of the bees for his six is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score six, 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 six. So we have two powers here, the paper power and America. And that first beast is the fact is the one who want the worship, the instrument in the hands of Satan. And how this is going to be done to speak and cause. There has to be legislation done. There has to be a proclamation. There have to be things set up where the legislation will provide this very result. Now, we have three branches of government in this country. Executive, hmm, legislative, and judicial. Now, which one of those branches will you think is the one that will be instrumental in bringing about the causative situation? The judicial, not the executive and nor the legislative, but the judicial. They will be one. If you're going to look at anything that's happening in the world, you look at how the judicial system is being put together. What type of mindset? The spiritual mindset. But I want to get to my last point now. Keep that in mind. That for another time. Are you with me so far? So there's going to come a time where there will be no buying and selling. We're told to get out of the cities. A hundred years ago, it's going to be serious business. Let's see, can we conclude this situation? It says, again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provision. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling would be a very serious one. We just had maybe a fraction of that during this so-called pandemic. I mean, just little things. I mean, we, you know, we make fun of it. You can buy toilet tissue. You get what I'm saying? I mean, we, we can laugh at that. There was cartoons or that. But those are indication. I mean, they now got to kind of put out certain foods and et cetera. We are already there in the beginning. We should now begin to heed the instruction, rule areas, where you get free from interference. We saw that. The time is near when large cities will be swept away and should be warned of, those, of these judgments. We see civil unrest, chaos in the cities. Oh, that God's people had a sense of the impending destruction of thousands of cities now almost given to idolatry. Not only in America, over the world. When we was in the Philippines, I mean, top spiritualism, they erected the image of this person that supposedly you touch the image and you'll be healed. Millions of Philippines was gathered there. All over the world. In the industries, believers who are now living in the cities will have to move to the country that they might save their children from ruin. Attention must be given to the establishment of industries hmm. in which these families call, can find rather, employment. Those who have charge of the schools, that means God will raise up men and women who have the skills and the talents. They will develop these industries. Got to take place. Should see what can be done by these institutions to establish such industries so that our people desiring to leave the cities can obtain modest homes without large outlay of means and can also find employment in both blank blank. There are favorable and encouraging features for the development of this plan. Study what these features are. This is where we need to be studying how we can do that. All that need to be done cannot be specified till 
a beginning is made. Did you get that? Somewhere a beginning got to be started. Then it goes on. Pray over the matter. Remember that God stands at the helm, that he is guiding in the work of the various enterprises. A place in which the work is conducted on right lines is an object lesson to other places. There must be no narrowness. What, 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 what's narrowness mean? Anybody know a definition of narrowness? Small-minded. small-minded. That's right, small-minded. We, we, we see roadblocks in front of us. We say, we can't do it. That cannot be because God is at the hem. No selfishness in the work. The work is to be placed on simple, sensible basis. All are to be, all are to be taught not only to claim to believe the truth as the truth, but to exemplify the truth in the daily life. We got to be what we teach. We are not to locate ourselves where we'll be forced into close relation with those who are not under God. A crisis is soon to come in regard to the observance of what? The Sunday party is strengthening itself. That was happening in the 1800s in its false claim. And this will mean oppression to those who are determined to keep the seven-day Sabbath. I put that out of the Lord. We are to place ourselves where we can carry out the Sabbath commandment in its fullness. Six days. You know the story. Seven-day Sabbath. If in the providence of God we can secure places away from the cities, the Lord will have us to do this. There are troubles time before us. We see it. We smell it. Now, it is no time now for God's people to be fixing their attraction or laying up their treasure in the world. The time is not far distant when, like the early disciples, we should be forced to seek a refuge in desolate and solitary places. As the siege of Jerusalem by the Roman armies, notice this, was the signal for flight to the Judean Christian. Notice this. So, the assumption of what? Power. Powers on the part of our nation in the decree enforcing the papal Sabbath will be a warning to us. You, you, you got to get this now. What does it mean? So, the assumption of power on the part of nation. All right, but now we're talking about now. You got to get this. We t- this is present, my dear. So it's when a government is telling you what you can do and cannot do against your country. So what is happening, that's true. Those are the precursor. We're being conditioned for that. But it says here that the assumption of power, because this COVID-19 is a conditioning process, that what you cannot do, you got to wear the mask. You got to stand your distance. You buy or not buy. Yeah, so those are, those are some of the indicators. But now you want to really listen in the political realm what is taking place within the political realm that is giving indication of this. You understand what I'm saying? The government, what I said, that the legislated, executive, judicial system, remember that first beast paper power, judicial system. Who consists of the judicial system? Who was placed there in positions? Hello. What are the religious persuasion of the judicial system? Who would be in the executive office that appoint these folks in certain positions? That's why we look at our present condition and look at the fact that how did this individual become president because God raised up and sat down because God want to speed up the process you hear what I just said he there has to be people in position in this country to carry this out that's what not just the fact that we're being conditioned what to wear what not to wear what to eat but what is taking place within the whole political realm Make sense to y'all? It goes on. It would been the time. All right, let me move on here. Look at this statement. In the last great conflict, the last great conflict, this is the Sunday crisis. The last great conflict in the country where we say, 
those who are loyal to God will see what? Every earthly support cut off because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell. Are y'all getting that? Satan, this one, Satan says, for fear of wanting what? Food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. I say, you know that too. We got to prepare for the season. We're almost there. Psalms 119, 126 is. Time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Therefore I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate every false way. May this be in our heart. And take time. Jot it down. Take time, read Psalms 37, the blessing to the righteous. Preparation time. This is the season with a short period of time that we have. I would say to, to those of us here, we need to take these to heart. I know as far as the ministry, et cetera, there has to be a positioning that the next season will not find us like we are in this season. We serve a, a mighty God. He's not bound by time. All he needs is some faithful souls. We are told that those who consecrate themselves to his service, he will never put them in a place where we not make provision. We got to be conscious of that. We have to set priorities. Like I said, because of wanting of food and clothing. And food going to be a big deal. Water, heating. God will have to. If, he, if we cooperate with God here, turn, turn the little desert place into an oasis. I'm not worried about that. My only concern right now is that God give us strength. And we become proactive. And don't forget, the physical preparation is essential, but we can't separate that spiritual. Because many people are leaving the city into the country, but they're not leaving with Jesus. I want to be perfectly clear, even those who hear this, to move from the city to the country, from the city to the country, to escape the time of trouble is not going to save you. You got to be sure Christ is in you. Because he's in you, you're going to be moving anyway. That's the first work. Because I know when we moved 43 years ago, we, we definitely was off the grid for 10 years and all of us was ready. We were ready for the mark of the beast to come in. We were ready for the buying and selling. We were ready for everything. I look back on my 43 years experience. Some have died. Many have died. Some have fallen away. Some are still remain. Still. And what was wrong with us? Heart. We did not have Jesus' heart. We had the mental understanding. We, had, we knew the right things. We built, we put things together. We had industries, we had schools, but no heart. Division. Abandonment. But now it's too late for that. We will be very prayerful. Twofold preparation. May God be with us. Let's keep one another in prayer. Keep the ministry, the families, how God will show us from henceforth what we need to be doing. He will send the help. Amen? Let us have a word of prayer and ask God for his grace. Be with us.
<coughs> Gracious Father in heaven, your instruction to us in the closing chapters of earth history is very plain. Lord, I pray that you help each one of us not to look to our own incapacity, but look to your word that you promise us. And all you need from us is a, a heart. And Lord, you've given us the free will. And pretty soon that free will will be taken politically, socially. But we will have that mind to choose. And I pray that those on the sound of my voice in my presence, watching on, will make a decision today. That they, each one of us, would choose your way for our lives. That you would choose your methods in preparing us to be ready for this final crisis. To take advantage of this season that we're in now. Putting things in order. We need your grace, Father. But Father, just take these hearts of ours and make them like your heart. Come into our lives and sup with us. Guide our thoughts. Guide our action. Guide every movement, Father. Because I know when you live in our lives, all things are going to be perfected. So, Lord, take these simple things we already given us. Some of us, you've given us property. You've given us these tangible things. They might not be the idea, but, Lord, we want to line ourselves up with you. We want you to become the commander-in-chief of our lives. You can turn a desert place into an oasis. You bring water out of a rock. You, crawl, you, 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 you divided the Red Sea. You, you, you caused the, the sun to stand still. You broke down walls by a shout. There's nothing too hard for you. So Lord, give us the disposition to want to cooperate with you. Let this be our desire and let us press together. Let us answer the prayer of Jesus in John 17 that we might be one. Let us do all we can to help one another to be in a position for the coming of the final crisis. Let us hear the cry of the poor, the cry of the weak. Let us use our gifts, whether intellectual gifts, whether it's physical gifts, to help one another to be in that place. Not to hide, but to be a tool in your hand to fill this earth with your glory. I pray this is our desire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen